Have you ever felt that subtle nudge of creativity inside of you? That desire to create something completely unique, but felt unsure about how to get that unique idea into the world? I've definitely felt that. In fact, I've spent hours watching videos on drawing, music composition, and other creative techniques, yet I often found myself wondering, what should I draw and why am I even doing this? I've really wanted to know what makes true artists tick and how I can transition from learning techniques to creating something truly beautiful and innovative. These frustrations were not limited to my hobbies. I felt them in my work as well. Despite watching countless social media and SEO tutorials, I always felt one step behind. How could I be the one to come up with these groundbreaking ideas and gain that true competitive edge? Then I discovered Rick Rubin's book, The Creative Act, and everything changed. Recently, I've been blending his insights with AI to build creative collaborators in the forms of prompts sequences and custom GPTs. These prompts and custom GPTs are significantly amplifying my creative output. Today I want to show you exactly how to build creative project blueprints and innovation roadmaps like these. Putting a focus on creativity feels more important now than ever before. Think about it, as AI continues to get better and better at doing stuff every day, coming up with creative ways to use this new technology might be the most important skill you can focus on. And that's what this video is all about. If you're new to the Blazing Zebra channel, I want to welcome you and thank you for joining me on on my mission of helping creative individuals, artists, entrepreneurs, and folks all over the world learn to use these powerful new AI tools. I've got a cheat sheet version of this video along with some coaching options that is available in my Patreon to my Patreon supporters. If you're getting something out of these videos, please check out my Patreon options. So here is the legendary producer, Rick Rubin. He has worked with uh, nearly all of the top artists that you can think of from the Beastie Boys to Red Hot Chili Chili Peppers to Johnny Cash. He's helped create some of the biggest hits of all time. And he recently created this book called The Creative Act, which as I mentioned, I am a huge fan of as it offers a deep exploration into the essence of creativity. This book is an amazing framework for the creative process, everything from listening to experimenting to all the good stuff that we're going to get into here. I can't recommend it highly enough. It has really changed my life. It is in one of the top three books of all all time that I have ever read. And here is just my take on this book. So this book can be interpreted in many different ways. And this was the sequence that I came away with after reading it a few times. And this is going to guide us through our exploration today. So starting with inspiration and observation, moving into capturing seeds, and we'll get into the details of what each of these mean here in a second. Moving on to exploration and experimentation, one of the most important phases, reflecting and refinement, completion and release. This is something I personally struggle with, just pushing your ideas out into the world, and then renewal and re-engagement. So on the inspiration and observation side, this was really a eye opener for me. This was part of uh, the artistic journey that I really hadn't thought about before. As I mentioned in the beginning, I would always get excited about learning different techniques and kind of just jumping in and using those and was not really paying attention to the world around me in the way that I probably should have in the way that I do now. So this is the first step of the process. Those ideas, those different observations, those are just kind of whispers of possibilities as he puts it in the book. They're not really ideas yet. They're just kind of little things you might overhear, things you might feel, things that might cross your mind. The next step in the process is capturing seeds from those observations, kind of figuring out which of those might actually be true ideas and then whittling them down to their core elements or those the essence of their ideas. From the seeds, we start to grow those seeds with experimentation and trying to find, is there some life here? Is there something more to this seed and he talks a lot about how the seeds can take many years to germinate so they may sit around for a while before they're ready to grow but this exploration and experimentation phase includes asking questions and considering different perspectives about your idea making connections between different ideas engaging in play and embracing accidents and imperfections the next step here is reflection and refinement and we'll get to prompts and custom GPTs related to all these very quickly but I want to outline this process for you so that you got it in the back of your mind holistically before we dive right into the prompts. The reflection and refinement phase is just that. So once you've kind of explored a few things, taking some time away, reassessing the idea, saying, hey, is this really what I think it is? Sometimes we can get too close to an idea and taking a little step away or getting some feedback. We're going to use LLMs to give us that feedback on our ideas can be very helpful. And then the most challenging 
exciting part for me, the completion and release. So knowing when the work is finished and ready to be shared, letting go of the perfectionism and embracing the inherent imperfections of the creative process, putting your work out into the world and allowing others to experience it. A lot of good prompts related to this. And then the final stage here is this renewal and re-engagement. This involves some reflection, maybe looking back on the project. What did we learn? How can we improve going forward? And then also looking out to the world around us and engaging in the world uh, and doing various activities that might spark other ideas. And in that way, this is sort of a circular process where this last part feeds right back into the first part, the observation. Getting into the prompts and custom GPTs, we're going to start with a fairly easy prompt sequence. And then from there, I'm going to show you how to build a custom GPT. And then the real magic, as I've mentioned in other videos, is personalizing that custom GPT. So it's important to think about how you might customize all of what we're going to go through today in a way that suits your creative style, whether that's your business, whether that's your artistic endeavors, cooking, anything under the sun this can be applied to. So here's the cheat sheet that I've mentioned. It's been interesting. The more of these I make, the longer they seem to get. This is 30 pages of prompts all related to becoming insanely creative. So I want to just jump right in here and grab a few of these and show you how they work. Here's a very general one that's a good starting place. Today I observed something, something you saw, overheard, felt, or something, maybe an interaction you had in an event. What deeper insights or lessons can be drawn from this? I think that one's pretty cool. We might come back to this one. This one I really like. I want to show you this example. Uh, here's one where we can upload a photo and say, hey, here's a photo I took. Can you help me notice the details and describe it more vividly? And this is all related to that first step of inspiration and observation. And now I'm jumping into ChatGPT4. This is the paid version. I highly recommend this over the free version. Uh, you can probably do all of this with Gemini as well, except for you cannot create the custom GPTs inside of Gemini, which I think is a major drawback. So I'm just copying and pasting that prompt straight out of the cheat sheet into ChatGPT4, and I'm uploading this photo. This is a photo I took in a New York City subway that really caught my eye. Let's see what ChatGPT has to say about it. So here's a look at this photo. I thought this was pretty cool, and I've really dug into the background of this. It's a project called Signals that was a coordination between the city of New York and uh, various indigenous peoples. Really cool project. Look it up if you get a chance. But today we're just going to dive in and see what ChatGPT had to say about this when I asked it to help me notice the details and describe it more vividly. It gave me a lot of thoughts here. Intriguing perspective within an urban subway station. The figure is positioned directly above the staircase, serving as a focal point against the stark geometry of the station. So it's starting to pull some of the reasons maybe that this image caught my eye and helped me to conceptualize those more deeply. So you can see in the cheat sheet, there's a ton of prompts just related to inspiration and observation. In fact, you could easily build a custom GPT just related to each one of these steps, and I may do that in future videos. I'll scroll through this slowly so you can do a screen grab or you can pause the video. I've got a bunch here if you're looking more into scientific observations rather than artistic observations. There's a bunch here for business, which we'll get into in a second. That's the second example that I want to go through. Be something you can use in your work life. But now I want to move into the capturing seeds section of the process. So looking for the core elements or the essence of these ideas. And in the cheat sheet, I'm just going to use this first prompt. I'm trying to understand the core essence of the idea. Can you please help me generate an exhaustive list of possibilities? And you can see ChatGPT has generated a bunch of different things here. Looking at this from all different angles, from the art in public spaces, urban storytelling, pixel art and digital influence, irony in contrast, it picked up on a small individual in the photo that I didn't even realize was there. So somebody who's sort of alone yet in an urban environment. A lot of different potential themes here as we're viewing it from very different angles and potentially put it into different frames. You could spend a lot more time capturing that seed and trying to decide exactly the core element, but for brevity's sake, we're going to move on to this exploration and experimentation phase. And I'll scroll down from the seeds 
prompts here into the exploration phase. But there are a ton more prompts I've created here in this capturing seed phase to help you with any science and business type situations and of course artistic endeavors. Now in this exploration and experimentation phase, just the first prompt here, what are 10 what if questions that could help us explore unconsidered aspects or potential transformations of this idea? So back in ChatGPT from that at list it generated, I really liked number two, which was all about urban storytelling. I said, let's follow that idea. Then I've copied in what are 10 what if questions that could help us explore unconsidered aspects or potential transformations of this idea. And ChatGPT responded with a lot of different ways we could explore urban storytelling as it relates to that image. These are beautiful. This will really help you move from just a basic idea to all sorts of ways that this could resonate with your audience and help you express what you felt when you captured that first image. And again, it doesn't have to be an image. You can use some of these other prompts to just say, you know, I've started with a feeling or I overheard something at a coffee shop. Any of those little wisps of things that sort of catch your ear can be very useful in this creative process. There are a ton more prompts in this exploration and experimentation phase. This, I think, is one of the areas that the large language model can really help you excel at looking at this concept from a lot of different ways and trying to figure out how you're going to use that concept. Now we're moving from exploration and experimentation into reflection and refinement. So taking a step back, identify what's working, what might need improvement, seeking feedback from others, being open to criticism, perhaps getting the large language model to help you think through how this would really be perceived by your audience or whoever might be the final end consumer of your ideas. So now I'm just going to grab this first prompt here in the reflection and refinement section, evaluate the creativity and innovation of the ideas presented and consider their uniqueness and potential to disrupt. I might edit that ending just a little bit. So there's the prompt that I've put in and ChatGPT has returned a bunch of different uh, takes on how to move this into a creative project that engages the community. Really cool. You can definitely steer this in any direction if it needs to be simplified, if it needs to be changed. Now moving into completion and release. Some of the prompts that I came up with here that I like the most are related to this audience simulation. So what are folks really going to think? think about this artwork once it's been created. So now I've asked a large language model to simulate the audience and I've said put yourself in the shoes of someone engaging with this art. How engaging do you find it? Discuss the elements that capture your attention and keep you interested as well as how it could be misinterpreted and how that might be addressed. So I went a little fast but it has up until this point created a full plan for a art installation project that focuses on urban storytelling. And here it has simulated the audience and it has highlighted some of the most engaging elements as well as the misinterpretations and how to address those. So complexity, over commercialization, misrepresentation, etc. So you can adjust your projects accordingly. And now continuing on with the completion and release here, there are a lot more prompts, but getting into release planning, there are some prompts around developing promotional strategies, identifying collaborators, uh, audience targeting. I've simply asked it, can you please create a project blueprint from everything we've discussed so far? And it has created this beautiful, basically a proposal for a art installation living mural project. I'm pasting this into a new doc. There's a little trick some people don't know about, but if you select all, go to format, clear formatting, it's gonna look much better here. So there you go, starting with just a photograph and a few short and easy prompts, a few minutes of work to convert that photograph, that sort of glimpse of an idea there to a full proposal for an art installation project. It's important to mention we could have steered the LLM in many different directions, starting with that photograph, whether that's creating a short story related to that photograph, song lyrics, ideas for visual art, or even prompts for 
for uh, AI generated art from that. There's a lot of different directions we could have explored. This was just one direction we went down with that photograph. But it's important to mention that the completion and release is not the final step of Rick's process. There's one more here, the renewal and re-engagement. So taking time to rest and recharge, kind of reflecting on what you've learned and looking for ways to become inspired based on that. I have a whole section of prompts related to this. Basically, you can start with something simple, telling the large language model to ask you about takeaways and insights gathered from this creative process. You can look at ways to manage your time better or look back and reflect on creative decision making. This part of the process, I think, is also important to keep the water in your creative well. So looking for immersive experiences. This is a big part of what Rick Rubin's book is about, staying inspired, looking at nature, looking at, you know, planning some transformative travel adventures, boundary pushing physical pursuits. These types of things can be helpful for artists as well as any uh, entrepreneurs, anybody trying to innovate. There are uh, a bunch of ideas here for business explorations as well. So exploring adjacent industries and technologies can be a great source of inspiration, engaging with your customers, trade shows, of course, shadowing successful entrepreneurs can be great. Uh, here's one that I really like, seeking out unusual mentors. This prompt in particular really sticks out to me, suggesting or seeking out unusual or unexpected mentors to provide fresh perspectives. And in this way, this feeds right back into that very first step of the observation and awareness where you're starting to capture new seeds and new ideas. So that was a simple prompt sequence for an artistic endeavor. And now I want to move on and show you how you can build a custom GPT. You can do that for an artistic endeavor, but to showcase all of the different things this can do, I'm going to create a custom GPT that might be useful in our work lives. And for this, I'm going back to the cheat sheet and I'm just going to cherry pick a few different prompts here that I think could yield some interesting results. And when I talk about personalizing all of this, this is what I mean, making sure that each prompt is in tune with you, your vision, and the project that you're working on. Here are the prompts that I've selected for this custom GPT. You can see I've got one for each section of the creative project process from observation to the seed capture, exploration, refinement, release planning, and completion. I grabbed all of these and I copied and pasted them into a tool that I've created that converts prompt sequences into custom instructions. This is one of my tools that I've created to do that and it's working pretty well. I will link to a video that explains more about this. This is a free tool available to anyone and you can just drop in a prompt sequence and generate instructions that work very well for a custom GPT. And here are those instructions. So it adds quite a bit more context and it separates each prompt into a bunch of steps, but I didn't have to do anything other than copy and paste it in there. And here is the work innovation bot that I've created. There's a link to this in the cheat sheet right here. This is probably the fastest way to get up and running with this process. I've got another one in the cheat sheet here for artistic expression, if that's more of the angle you want to go down. And I've also included the instructions to these so that you can modify them and personalize them with other prompts. So let's give this a test drive. I've put something in here that I've recently overheard a coworker complaining that they were not getting recognized for their hard work, implying that they might start quiet quitting. So the first step of this custom GPT is to blow out that observation into a bunch of different ramifications and look at it from different angles. And now it's asking if we'd like to explore different perspectives on this idea. I'm simply going to write yes. And now it's offering here to see how professionals from different fields might view this. Now it's asking if we'd like to create an innovation roadmap based on this idea. The 
This is a good basic sketch, but I think it can be fine tuned and that's what the next step does. It's given us some good refinements to that initial strategy and now it's asking if we'd like to explore a multi-stage rollout. It's given us details on that rollout and now it's asking if we'd like to create a detailed innovation roadmap. And here is the completed roadmap. You can see it didn't really give us a good title for our document, so I'm going to just nudge it in that direction. And there you have it. In just under 10 minutes, we went from observing something in the workplace to creating a full rollout plan that could potentially solve some very big problems here. But again, this is just one example of how you might configure this innovation bot. I've got links to these bots in the cheat sheets. I've got all the instructions there so you can see what's going on under the hood and experiment with those. This video is getting rather long and there's one area here that I didn't even get to cover in the cheat sheet which is customizing your creative journey so these are all prompts for identifying your creative style aligning this process with your interests and passions developing your creative voice remixing and combining your influences personalizing your creative environment tailoring your creative challenges so again there's a link in the description to this cheat sheet if you got something out of this video I'd really appreciate you checking out my patreon I've got some coaching options in there as well there's some awesome discussions happening during our discussion circle which happens on Tuesdays so there's an option there to join that group coaching session it's also some one-on-one -on -one coaching there thanks a ton for watching I really appreciate you giving me a thumbs up let me know what you are missing from this where did you need some clarification what are some other areas that I can explore maybe I could do a whole video on this customizing your creative journey please let me know in the comments how I can improve what I'm doing what you're looking for what you're struggling with and some Subscribe if you haven't already. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next video. Make your dreams come true.